Hey, family. Pastor already here with a uh, point in the way in the Word and some copy. <clears throat> you know, it says in the Bible that there'll come a time when people will turn away from their natural affections. Now, it is not a direct quote. I'm just kind of paraphrasing here. So don't jump all over me. Um, but it says that they'll leave their natural affections. You know, men with men, m women with women. And these, are, you know, that's what they're going to turn to. And we see it so much today. I mean, come on now. People are saying, well, my child is gender confused. Well, if you have a, a son that's thinking he's a girl, I'll tell you how you end that confusion. Give him a swift kick right up between their legs. And I'll tell you, that'll straighten out their confusion. They'll realize exactly who they are. Now, I'm not saying that we should all do that. But when it comes to gender ideology, you know, this is exactly what Satan would use. You know, one of his greatest sins is a sin of vanity. And that's all this is. This is just a modified sin of vanity. You know, boys thinking that they're just women in men's disguises or women thinking that they're men and then they go through all this gender affirmation stuff and they can't reverse it it's too late and so many times we find out now that there are those who have gone through this either through pressure by their parents and doctors or through their own fruition that regret it and they turn from God. They just sit there and say, God, how could you let this happen? Well, God didn't let it happen. You through your lust and desires for yourself, your own flesh, have caused this. Just like the Bible says, you know, they'll leave, they'll leave sound doctrine and go to doctrines of demons. Again, paraphrasing. Because they have no no clue, no idea. Today, family, are we going to allow these crazy sins to continue? Or are we going to raise up and make a voice? I mean, there's so many people out there, and especially pastors and churches, who don't want to address this problem because they don't want to hurt feelings. Well, you know what? You think Jesus thought that way when he overturned the tables of the money changers in the, in the square in the church? Do you think he cared about their feelings? No. He cared about what they were doing to God. He even told them, he goes, you pit of vipers, you've turned my father's house into a den of thieves. Like we discussed yesterday with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You know, Jesus would sit there and say, you guys are like a whitewashed tomb, beautiful and adorned on the outside, but inwardly, you're full of rotten bones. You're like a cup on a shelf that's beautiful to look at, and when you lift it, it's filthy, dirty inside. Would you drink from that? No, but there are people that will today. They have given up what is logical and gone to the illogical. They've taken the path of least resistance. And I got news for you, that if you're going to take a path of least resistance, you're taking the path of a coward. Because only a coward doesn't want to work hard. Only a coward wants to sit there and say there is no God. Only a coward is willing to turn his back on everything that is holy and righteous. Only a coward. And only a coward would have the cojones enough to sit there and tell God, you didn't know what you were doing when you made me. Like I said, you want to end that problem? Just give them a swift kick between their legs, and they'll realize whether they're male or female. And I know the females, if you kick them between the legs, I know that probably hurt too. <laughs> I don't say that it wouldn't. I think it would. But with guys, their genitalia would definitely set them off. They would have a realization that they're guys real fast. 
you know, this, uh, you know, all these people that have done, gone through changes or they, or they're cross-dressing and stuff like that. You know what? The Dylan Mulvaney's, these people, all you got to do is give them a good swift kick and they'll change their mind about who they are. <laughs> Today, family, let's not turn from the path that God has set us on. His path is righteous. And you know what? Sure, it's filled with rocks and thorns and it's not it's not a pretty path. I'm not saying that it is. But you know, it's going to take you a little bit of work to get through there. And you know, when you get to the end, the gift is there. Everlasting life. We'll be doing more studies on that later. Because what I'm about to tell you will just blow your mind. Because God is amazing. And His Word is amazing. So if you're not reading your Bible... Break it out, dust it off, blow the dust off the pages, and take some time to read. And if you don't understand it, then ask somebody, hey, what does this mean? You know, Jesus tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15 that a workman need not be ashamed of his work, but he, you know, counts the cost, and then he rightly divides it, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what we need to do. We need to rightly divide it. There's a reason why the Old Testament is the Old Testament and the New Testament is the New. And it has everything to do with Daniel and the 70 weeks. But we'll discuss that later, like I said. Little food for thought. Hopefully we point you in the right way to keep going forward. Like I said, the path of least resistance is a path of cowards. So stay on the path that God has you on. You may not like it, but you know what? He's going to get you through it. You know, I'm reminded of an old song by a, a Christian singer, Keith Green. He had a song that said, You know, it ain't no use you banging your head up against the cold stone wall because nobody's perfect except for the Lord and even the best are bound to fall. Remember that He is divine and you are the branch. He'd love to get you through it if you give him a chance. You just keep doing your best and pray that it's blessed and Jesus takes care of the rest. Have a blessed day, family. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.